Hello again and welcome to my workshop. Before I begin today's video I'd like to just point out that I'm not actually a real machinist. Uh, I don't claim to be, although I did have a drink with one in a bar once, which I think is all any of us can hope to achieve in life. Now if you do want to see a real machinist I suggest you get over to Mr Crispin or Joe Pye or Josh Topper's channels and check them out. And once you've done that, go and look up Dave Ticehurst videos because he's really great. However, don't do that until you finish watching my video. Now, I would like to present an all new series of short, informal, but informative films, which I have titled Things Other People Have Already Adequately Documented, but which I'm going to film anyway. You may think that's a complicated title, but it really isn't. It's a simple mnemonic that's easy to remember. Top hard wigitfa. Now then, episode one. Machining a D15 backplate and what to do when you're part way through and realize you bought the wrong one. For those of you who signed up for this course, please get out your course textbook, Mr. Crabtree's Book of Quantum Mechanics for Boys, and go to chapter one. This is an import style adjustable run out chuck, which I set up on my last lathe, and there's a couple of videos about this that review it. And its accuracy and it's actually quite an accurate chuck on the inside jaws I have to regrind the outside if I'm going to use those anyway I want to use this on the new lathe which requires the manufacture of an appropriate back plate for it I have procured this one which is a nice hefty item and this is actually a South Bend brand and I've just spent the last week cleaning the Cosmoline off it. It was caked in it. Uh, it's just a matter of soaking it in WD-40. And now it's a matter of turning the face to fit this. So that's what we're up to today. I'm not real thrilled about it because this is cast iron and I don't want to get cast iron all over my lovely new bedways. So I am going to take steps to protect the machine, uh, which is going to look highly unsafe. First things first, which is to mount the back plate on the machine and absolutely critical that these mating surfaces are all scrupulously clean and the same on the back plate. There, all nice and protected. As you know, the best uh, coverings for a machine tool are I use rugby shirts. So <clears throat> I've covered up the whole front end extensively uh, and made sure that I've got enough travel to cut everything I need to. So all is well. So the plan is machine this and then I'll, I'll probably vacuum as I go, try and get as much of the cast iron as I can, stop it blowing everywhere because uh, I don't want it to get underneath the apron and saddle and get on the ways and grind my ways away. Um, but this should, this should work. Now I wouldn't normally do this at all. I certainly don't recommend it. I can get away with it here because cast iron just flakes off. It doesn't make long stringy chips. If you're doing that, you would not be wanting to have this stuff lying around, but this will be okay. So all I have to do is turn the, uh, do a light skim of the face and then turn a boss to fit the chuck. Once that's done, this has to go to the mill for the bolt pattern to go in.
bit of an error in judgment here. If you look at this, uh, well, this is the new back plate. Here's the old one. This is the boss I need. Go in here. Well, as you can see, the through hole in the back plate is about the same size as the OD of the boss that I need. In trying to find a back plate that would work for this, I was getting so frustrated when I found one that was a D15 and thick enough and had no holes to get in the way of the bolt pattern I needed. I went ahead and bought it and forgot to check the through hole. Um, so I've got a couple of options, which is go find another backing plate, make one from scratch, or what I'm going to do is actually just combine these two. I'm going to cut the bus, the, um, actually this is the one I'm going to cut off. Better make sure I do that right. This boss is not needed. This is what was on there to mount onto my old lathe. So I'll get rid of that. Get rid of the thread up the middle because that's not needed. This is the correct mount boss for this. These holes are in the right place. So what I'll do is remove the boss off the back, face this true, machine a recess to match the boss that I put on here. Since I had it up in the lathe, I went ahead and just machined a locating feature. And I'll make that a very light press fit. So that is concentric. And then once those are pressed together, I'll drill through there and take the thread out and put a tapping hole through here. And then we'll be able to bolt all three together. Bit of a cluster really, but whatever. This is just a very light press fit onto the new back plate. So I have to hope that the machining that I've done and the care that I took has resulted in features running true because I don't have an easy way of bolting the new, this old back plate, modified back plate to the new one uh, without putting the chuck on. <clears throat> which isn't great forethought on my part, but if I've done everything correctly, it should work out. So let's find out and use the test gauge, see what we've got.
but I'm going to just make sure this thing is seated properly first. Careful of your instruments, Stu. Jesus. Well, I've got a little more variation. It does make me wonder if, since this is unsecured, maybe I should just put the chuck on, tighten this all up, and then see what run out I've got. I think I'm going to do that before I do anything more. So I've got now a thou run out back here, hardly any there. So that means the pin is doing this. Now I wonder if I can, uh, wonder if I can balance that out. So the answer is no, I can't balance it out. That face needs to get trued up in order for this to run true. So that's what happens next. So what I'm going to do here is counter bore this part of the uh, back plate. I'm not mad keen that the counter bore is going to break out, but there's not anything to be done about that. Um, that will allow me to bolt this plate to this plate securely and keep the head of the bolt sub flush. And then I'll be able to mount this back up, take a skim cut across here, maybe another one here, and uh, get it trued up to the lathe. Turns out I don't have any 3 8 16 screws the right size. Well, I don't have any 3 8 inch 16 screws other than what I'm using for the chuck install. So that's a fail. So I have to pick some up. Uh, in the meantime, I'll make the bushings to fill those counter bores in during the final install. So this is a piece of 5 8 inch, uh, happens to be TG and P leftover materials, 1045. And uh, I'm just going to turn the OD to 598 for a close fit and part these off. You know, drill a hole up the middle and uh, there we go. Still got the parting burrs on there. I just want to check the diameter fit. When um, once I've finished skimming this and got this trued up, 
then I'll measure these depths and uh, clean all these up to fit. Good. I'm not going to push them all the way in. They're real, they're just, oh yes, exactly right. They're just snug, perfect, perfect. I'm going to push them all the way in because I don't want to have to fight getting them back out. Once this is skimmed, I'll finish these up. This has become a bit of a cluster, honestly. I am really not at all happy with this two-piece backplate solution, especially now that I've counterboard it so that I can hold part A onto part B. However, there's really no reason this shouldn't work. Uh, it's just I would have been better off biting the bullet and buying a piece of steel six inches in diameter and however thick that is, a couple of inches thick, would have been um, cheaper overall and a better solution. Just would have involved having to make the taper to suit the D15 uh, setup. And there's a chance I will do that anyway because this is just starting to piss me off. But I'm this close and this will get me uh, to a point where I can use that chuck. So I'm going to finish it now. So what's left is to face this surface. This surface is the one that controls everything in terms of alignment for that chuck. Um, while I'm here, I will skim the OD of the boss as well, just to make sure that's true and tidy this up, make sure the boss is not too long after doing these. Um, and then I'll fit it all up and assemble it and put it into service until such time as this irritates me to a point where it has to go. Um, I went this way because these cast iron back plates are usually actually less expensive than buying a piece of raw material, but this has ended up going the wrong way. Oh well. So I've got the chuck assembled up on the back plate and installed and off camera, what I did was turn these little bushings to length. And these, these are just to fill in the space where the counter ball was. So they're just a bushing with a hole in that the mounting screw runs through and that's just takes up the space. So crap doesn't get in there. I suppose I could back turn the, <laughs> this to blend in, but I've run out of patience with this now. Anyway, next next step is to get a gauge pin in the jaws and true it up. Let's see if we can figure out run out. So make sure the needle is in the middle. Move the cross slide. Okay, there we are. All right. That's more like it. What are we there? A couple of tenths. All right, now we'll move to the we'll zero this. gauge pin. Oh, that's much better. See that needle's barely moved at all. So there is a little more run, but five tenths. Went 
went the wrong way there. There we go. So I've got it about five tenths end to end. I can probably get it better than that if I want. So that's not bad on a three jaw chuck. So we'll call that good. Well, there it is. Import. Um, set true style chuck installed with a two-piece back plate which i'm still not happy about when it comes to making parts you should never settle for second best and i sort of feel like this is in terms of functionality it shouldn't be any different to a one piece but it's not really right so, and that it's not sitting very well with me so and I go with it for now. If a piece of six inch steel comes my way, I'm remaking this. Alternatively, I may go the route of just getting a bison or a tool mix chuck anyway. I don't know. But there it is. It's a solution and it works and gets me going so I can use this chuck. Um, one other closing comment is that during the making of this back plate, um, a friend of mine asked me, well, what are you going to do machining cast iron when you're making engines? Are you going to cover your lathe in sheets and blankets? Because frankly, that's awkward and uh, bloody dangerous. And uh, I thought about that and it occurs to me that really the, the real problem is not so much the chips. Those are easily cleaned up. It's really that dust that comes off and in employing the shop vac to minimize the mess while I was turning these, uh, I realized that it's really easy to keep that under control. So what I'll probably do is just make an extractor specifically for cast iron in the form of a tube that plugs into the shop vac. So I can have that out of the way and have a extractor mounted on the tool post. And I think that will do the bulk of the job save me having to tear the carriage apart that's the other option but if i was in a manufacturing environment running this every day you wouldn't be able to afford to screw around like this just have to use the machine and get on with it but as hobbyists where we can't afford to uh, replace machines because the work we're doing isn't paying for them uh, we like to look after them so we have to go to some of these lengths but i think the extractor vacuum will be a very good solution to that. So that will be another upcoming project. Anyway, there it is. If you made it even uh, a few percent of the way into this video, then very well done. Thanks for sticking with me. And uh, I hope this provided some form of entertainment or whatever. Um, I certainly learned a few things along the way, like stop getting frustrated, step back and take your time because it was just it was just frustration that led me to pick in this back plate, which seemed to be the right one, only to discover that there was one feature that made it not right. But here we are. I have a working three jaw chuck with uh, five tenths run out. And uh, I'll take that. Thanks again. All the best. Stay well and uh, best of luck for 2024.